My name is Dale Maley. I'd like to share with you today some lessons I learned on building my second LED lighted display box for a stained glass panel. In 2018 I did my first LED display box. I spent many hours of experimentation to learn about LED lighting. That stained glass panel was of a bluebird and it was 12 inches wide by 20 inches tall. For that project, I purchased an LED strip light, 6.4 feet long, which has 300 LEDs. I had some issues with the LED bright spots showing up uh, on that project, but I was able to uh, work through those. I donated the finished project to a nonprofit building, and they just love the uh, uh, bluebird lit up bluebird uh, display. In fact, they leave it lit 24-7, and at nighttime they use it as a nightlight. Back in 2019, I made a stained glass panel of our old city hall building in Fairbury, Illinois. It really turned out nice, it looked nice in the sunlight, but unfortunately I'm out of exterior window space in my house to display it. So I got the idea, why not uh, make an LED lighted display box uh, for this old city hall panel just like I did on the bluebird panel. Now the old city hall stained glass panel is quite a bit bigger. It's 16 and a half inches wide by 27 inches tall. The old city hall panel is roughly twice the area of the first project I did the bluebird panel. In fact the ratio is 1.87 which is close to twice. So it begs the question, do I need twice the LED lighting as I did on the first Bluebird panel? Unfortunately, I don't remember what dimmer setting I used on the Bluebird panel. And it's in another town uh, 10 miles away, so it's kind of difficult to go check it. So I decided to gamble and try to use the same 300 LED strip as I did on the Bluebird panel. But of course, when I went to buy the same unit, it was discontinued. However, I found the equivalent one for less than $20 on Amazon. Here's a screenshot of the unit that I bought from Amazon for $18. It's 16.4 uh, feet long. Uh, it includes a dimmer and a power supply. Sometimes you go to look to buy the LED strip light and it's just the light strip itself. It does not include a dimmer or a power supply. And I wanted those, in this case, to be one unit. So it's nice about this, and it's less than 20 bucks. The number of lumens displayed is uh, somewhere else in the Amazon description. It's just not shown on this screenshot. Now on this project, I didn't want, did not want the LEDs directly behind the stained glass panel to try to avoid any bright spots from the little LED uh, squares. So there's two options there uh, to accomplish that. One would be to make two boxes, uh, one to hold the panel, and then the second box behind it would be bigger than the front one. That would be a little more difficult to make. Another option, option two, would be to have a front frame and then just have one box behind it that's uh, large enough such that the LED strip is outside of the border of the stained glass panel. So I've been doing woodworking 40 years. I always like to keep it simple, so I chose option two. If you horizontally slice through <coughs> the box, this is the view that you would see. Uh, down on the bottom there, the pink uh, thin rectangle, that's the stained glass panel. Then to hold that in place, I elected to use uh, two levels of wood spacers. The first one is, uh, or they're both 5 16 inch thick. The first one fits between the stained glass panel and the outer frame, shown in yellow. Then on top of that is a second level, which is a little bit wider, so it covers up the border on the stained glass panel. Then to hold both of those in place, I use screws to screw them in. <coughs> Then you can see on the left hand side uh, there's two little rectangles there. Those represent two wraps of the LED strip lights. On this shot the back cover is not shown. I do have a back cover. 
Then when you get the box built, you paint it the inside of it semi-gloss white to reflect the light. So if you are a stained glass person and you really uh, don't know anything about woodworking, this expanded view of the cross section would help to explain to any woodworker how to make the wood frame. And then uh, using these key dimensions here, the size of the of the box can be modified really to fit any size of stained glass panel. So uh, down on the bottom there, uh, in this case, uh, yellow is the stained glass panel itself. Then to the left of that is a, a, the first layer of wood to hold it in place, which is red. The next one above is green. And you can see it's just flush with the edge of the border of the stained glass panel. Then I, I use some uh, number eight by inch and a quarter screws to retain the two wood pieces and together they hold the stained glass panel in position. Above that in purple are the two wraps of LED strip lighting. They come with sticky tape but I don't trust that to hold up over years and years of service so I use these special plastic clips which are made just for LED strip lights. That way if the sticky fails the clips will still hold them roughly in place. Uh, going on up in blue is the back panel. I used 3 16 Luan plywood for that. I recessed it uh, a little bit deeper so that when I put the number 6 by 5 8 screws in to hold the back panel on, the screw heads won't stick out and scrape the wall that you're hanging this on. The uh, front uh, border is actually 2.5 inches wide, and then the uh, sides are a total of three and a quarter inches tall and the other appropriate dimensions are shown. I use a free drafting program called SketchUp and this drawing shows what the uh, lighted LED lighted display box should look like when it's all built. Now here's a view of the wood box with a stained glass panel laying in the proper position with the two levels of wood that are going to be used to retain it. The next step will be to paint everything, then uh, screw in the uh, two levels of wood to hold the panel, and then uh, mount. This shot shows the installation of the LED strips. Uh, you can see I got two wraps going all the way around. The uh, Plastic clips with the screws are shown. There's actually two types here because a few came with the, the new LED kit, but not enough. And I had some other style left from, from the Bluebird project, which I used here. Uh, this one was a little bit different. Um, yeah, I had to cut a notch in the box for the power wire to come out. In the first unit, I was able to drill about a 5 8 inch hole and then slip the power cord through that but you can't do that with this kit. You have to use a notch to get the wire outside the box. This shot shows the two uh, levels or two layers of LED strips going around the inside of the box with the plastic clips. And when you put the clips on, make sure not to cover up the little square light emitting diodes, which are essentially the light bulbs. You put the clips in between those so you don't block any light. Now here's the unit all built and ready to test the LED lights. I put the coffee cup on top to give you an idea of the scale of how large this project is. Now here's a photograph where I had some fluorescent room lightings on and I started to light up the box. And uh, one thing I learned in the first project is what your naked eye sees and what a uh, camera sees are two different things. But I was really pleased overall with the lighting effect here. When you look at this, uh, the upper part of Old City Hall is supposed to be blue sky, yet you'll see to the left and upper right, the blue fades out to white. Well, actually, that's not what your human eye sees. It's all blue to the human eye. So let's start with a normal fluorescent lights in a room level and right now the unit has no power going to it. We will turn it on 
and this is the lowest level power setting. Each time I push the button uh, on the dimmer, it will increase the brightness. So here's click one, click two, click three, click four, click five, and that's the maximum brightness. Now we have a completely black room. We'll turn the unit on. And this is at the lowest power setting on the dimmer. So we will take the power up. Here's click one. Click two. Click three. Click four. Click five. And that is the maximum power level on the dimmer. I thought the video would do a good job of showing the different levels of brightness, but it did not turn out as well as I thought. Plus the camera seems to also adjust each time you change the light. But the to the naked eye, uh, I think it's just wonderful, the lighting levels that turned out on this project. So some closing thoughts on this project. I was pretty nervous that I would not have enough LED light quantity because uh, the old City Hall panel was so much bigger, twice as big as the Bluebird panel, but in reality it turned out just fine. I'm going to use this same basic box design for other stained glass panels that I have. It seems to work very well and it's easy to make. And the woodworking portion is very straightforward and relatively quick to make. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned some things that could help you on your project. Thank you.